Hello, hello. So, in a previous conversation, I was talking about relationships and the importance of relationships to the quality of our lives. And I was talking about one particular type of relationship that has a lot to do with our personal development, which is what I call the marital relationship, right? That is your romantic, sexual, uh, adult, um, uh, significant other sort of relationship, right? And, and I use the word marital, but I'm not referring to the legality of marriage, if you're legally married or not. I'm talking about that person in your life with whom you share an adult, consensual, romantic, sexual type of relationship. And th that's what I'm talking about, right? So this person is not in one of those types of relationships and uh, tells me that he has a few friends and he asks me, well, is that enough? You know, why do you talk about the romantic relationship as though it's important? I don't have one and I'm okay. Is that enough? And of course, this is an entirely personal choice. Remember that as a hypnotherapist, I don't tell people how they should live their lives or what they should do. That's not what we do. That's not what I do. I have no opinion on that. Number one, I want to preface the answer to the question by saying this. So I work with the person who, sa who says to me, well, look, I want to be in a relationship, but I can't for some reason. I can help that person. Or the person who says, I am in a relationship, but it's horrible. I want to make it better. Or I want to find a way to get out of this relationship and I don't know how. That kind of thing. But the point I'm making is that we work with the person who him or herself identifies a problem. I, I'm not the one who, who tells them, okay, you have a problem. You should do this. The classical example is smoke cessation, quit smoking. When I started my career as a hypnotist, you know, smoke cessation was a big deal. A lot of people came to the office to quit smoking. Smoking was much more prevalent than it is today in the United States. The numbers have actually gone down. People use other kinds of substances, but I'm talking about cigarette smoking has gone down. So I never walked up to somebody and said, you know, to a smoker and said, you should stop smoking. Here's my card. Call me at the office. I'll make you quit smoking. That's nonsense, you know. I believe it's nonsense anyway. I think that if a person wants to quit smoking, as an example, I, I can definitely help the person quit smoking, and I've done this hundreds of times. But, but we wouldn't tell somebody, you should quit smoking. And smoking is something that today is known to be, to be a poor choice in terms of your health outcome. It's not my opinion. It's being published. It, it's, it's a known fact, right? So, if smoking, which is something relatively obvious that we shouldn't do from a health perspective, is not something that I'm willing to tell people not to do, much less so other choices, such as whether or not to be in a relationship, that's totally up to the person. It is true. There are millions of people who are not in a romantic relationship and feel quite happy. There are people, there are monks in monasteries, there are priests and nuns, there are many people who choose not to be in that kind of relationship and report to feel very happy. I, I, I'm not, um, I don't have any problem with that. It, you know, it's perfectly okay. So this person who asked me the question, I don't know that he's actually happy because one thing is what we report. Another thing is what's really going on inside. So I don't know which way it is and I have no opinion on that because, you know, if you don't think it's a problem, to live as you live. I'm okay with you living the way you live. That's okay. But I'm, not, but, but I'm talking about the person who, who believes that a personal, intimate, romantic type relationship is part of their development. For some people, the relationship becomes part of their schooling in life. You see, it's part of their growth because our partners end up becoming a sort of mirror. And you're going to see, invariably, if you are in a long-term relationship with a, with a partner, with a spouse, with a, with a person, you know, if you're intimately, intimately connected with that person, you're going to notice that sooner or later, it, it's not immediate, it's not at first. At first, there's attraction, excitement, this, that. But in time, you, you will notice that you become a mirror of one another. So, you're going to dislike features of this person, 
that actually you dislike about yourself. You're going to admire features that you also believe you own, but you're also going to feel perhaps jealousy of certain things. In other words, you're going to find all kinds of projections and the person is also going to project onto you issues that they have and it becomes a soup of emotions and projections and attraction and repulsion and all kinds of things which by navigating and healing and forgiving we end up growing quite a bit so the relationship becomes a very powerful venue for self-development and growth it isn't that everybody must be in a relationship it is that for some people, that is something that they really desire. And for whatever reason, they're not living it. Some people because they cannot find a relationship, I call them the chronically single, and other people because they are in, in, in chronic distress, relationship distress, or relationship turmoil, as I say. So every relationship they have starts off okay, but eventually falls apart and they have a lot of stress and they break down and that kind of thing. So they want to live a good relationship, but for whatever reason, they haven't been able to. But they have that desire. They have that drive. So our job is to help them get there. So if a person tells me, I don't have that desire, are you saying there's something wrong with me? Of course not. If you don't have that desire, and if you're being honest with yourself, it I'm not the arbiter here. If you're being honest with yourself and you don't want to be in a relationship, it's perfectly okay, as millions of people are not. There's nothing wrong with that choice. The, I, I repeat, the issue here is for the person who wants to live that experience, but for whatever reason hasn't been able to live a satisfactory relationship. That's where all of this comes in. Because we see the relationship under this view, for these people, we see the relationship as a mirror of the self. In other words, this significant other person in my life is a mirror of what's hidden about me from me. And I see those things in the mirror of the other person. That's what we call projection. And now I'm going to have to navigate a bunch of emotions. And there's a pleasure there which, which keeps me tied to that person so that I can work out those issues and those bugs, right? But, but it becomes a form of schooling. It becomes a form of therapy in a sense. And, um, and, every, and that's why in every relationship there are difficulties because we're all dealing with self-difficulties projected onto the other person. Of course, this is not a whole... Uh, discussion about relationships. I'm simply answering the question, is it enough to have a few friends? Well, only you can answer that question if you have no desire. Because desire is almost like, what is a desire, right? When you desire something, that's a message that, you know, it's like hunger. It's a signal that you need food and nutrition to survive. Thirst, you're low on water, you got to drink water. So this is like a hunger, a thirst, telling you that you need that experience to continue growing. And then you tell me, well, I don't have that hunger. Okay, then don't live that experience if you don't want to. Okay, so it isn't a matter of, you know, is it enough that I have a few friends and no spouse? It, it's up to you. If you want a spouse and you don't have one, notice, if you want one and you don't have one, then we can help you. But if you have no desire for it and you're genuinely okay with it, no, no, there's, no prob there's nothing to address there. We're not saying that that's a problem. We're saying that that's okay, provided that you're sincerely acknowledging to yourself that that's not an experience that you care to live. The problem would be if you're in denial and you're compensating and there are other addictions covering it up, you know, then, then it would be a problem for you. But until you realize that, you know, there's really nothing that anybody can do to help, right? But there are people who genuinely don't want that experience or don't care for it or not interested or don't miss it. And that's perfectly all right. Blessings to all of you.